John here. Electricians need to know. Uh, GFCIs, ground fault circuit interrupts, GFIs. Now they came out, they were a ground fault circuit interrupt device. Five or six years later, uh, this is about 20 years ago, five or six years later, uh, they went to an unbalanced circuit device that trips if the circuit gets unbalanced. That just changed the way we installed them. However, the name stuck, GFIs. Okay, so you find them in your house, 20 amp uh, GFIs in the kitchen and 15 in the bathrooms and outdoors and in the garage. Now, it's important not to put a 15 in your kitchen because the 15 amp, the toaster or the coffee pot or something will just eat this thing up eventually. So it's best to make sure that there are 20 amps in the kitchen. Now the rest of the house, the backyard, uh, the garage, the, the bathrooms, and they could be all tied together under a load, under one GFI, uh, they're usually a 15. I never put in a 15 because uh, I've been screwing screws down for a long time and I have this pretty good grip and I can bust the terminals on this 15. So I always buy 20s uh, just because they're dur more durable. Okay, that being said, how to change them. All right, a lot of people get in trouble. What they do is they pull off all the leads. Now, I've got a, a GFI here that's wired and pretend my hand is a box. Okay, and I pull this out of the box and I've got two sets of leads going into the bottom and I got one set of lead coming into the top and I got all the grounds in this wire net. So that's typical of the installation you're going to find. This lead is a power lead. It goes to the line side of the GFI. Now, uh, years and years ago, uh, in electronics and other devices, we brought in power to the top and loads out the bottom. Recently, some of the manufacturers said, oh, I, we can put in power at the top, come out the bottom if we want to, but we're going to turn that around just because we can. Um, we don't like that. It irritates us, but uh, a lot of times you're going to get loads in the uh, loads coming out the top and sit and power coming in the bottom so you got to check on the back to make sure if it's a line or a load and where where those uh, determinations are okay in this case the line side goes back to the panel and feeds power to the GFI it has to be on the line side the load side you notice the blacks are on one side on a gold terminal and the whites are on a silver terminal on the other side. The, the small uh, slots are the power side and the uh, horizontal slots and the larger slot and the horizontal slot is, is the neutral side. Okay, so anyway, this is what it's going to look like when you pull it out. So you need to identify the power going in and the neutral going in those make the GFI work. Without those being in the right position, uh, the GFI won't work, it won't reset, and you won't be able to protect your loads. Now that being said, sometimes this circuit has another set of leads coming into it and going out to a different part of the house, a continuation circuit. And it, you may have these two leads down here, you may only have one lead down here, you may not have any loads down here. It just goes in like on a back porch or something. It goes in and it protects the circuit that's plugged into it and that's all it does. It doesn't have a continuation uh, load side that would protect other receptacles like in a kitchen or in a bathroom. Okay, so it's pretty simple. Power has got to come in the, the line side of the GFI and it's got to go out the load side of the GFI. But try to determine that before you take any wires loose. Uh, make sure that the neutral is on the silver side and the hot wires, the black wires, or red wires are on the gold side. So a red wire is a circuit just like a black wire. And uh, they can have either either color uh, on the power side. Whites are always, neut are always neutrals and the the uh, grounds are always, uh, not always, some of them are green, but most of the time they're bare. And the green goes to the uh, ground, green ground plug at the bottom, screw at the bottom. Okay, so 
to test if if you pull this let's say you pull this apart and I'm going to hold this and pull it apart and then we'll show you how to test uh, okay we pull the GFI off of there and now I'm not really sure uh, where my line uh, and my loads are uh, they're kind of all dumbed up so what do I need to test this okay so I turned off power when I started so uh, we have to isolate all the black wires or red wires so they're not touching anything then we have to use a tester now uh, here's a, uh, one of those idiot lights and you can use that to find out where your hot wire is now the hot wire will go back to a case and this case has a white wire in it well that will be your neutral so if this black wire is the hot one this one would be your neutral and it goes back to the panel okay the rest of them would be loads all right unless you had a double a uh, continuation circuit so that way we would have two black wires on the hot side and two neutrals on the hot on the line side pardon me okay and only one uh, on the load side only one black and one white on the load side now like I said before uh, you may not have a load you may have two loads you may have two lines you may have two loads and two lines so uh, different configurations but it's important to make sure that the loads get back on the load side and the lines get back on the line side in the right in the right configuration so you just need to be careful when you take it apart okay so if you don't have an idiot light you can use a tester uh, to test between the hot and the neutral to find out now you're just going to light up between the hot and the neutral uh, if you turn on power and uh, and if you use even an idiot light like this where you or you have a light bulb and a socket and a couple of leads on it I mean you can use this as a tester it's just a light bulb uh, you take wire nuts and you you uh, this is kind of awkward to do but you can take a wire nut these wire nuts are cheap you can buy a bag of wire nuts uh, and you twist them on and uh, they hold pretty good and you twist on the white wire uh, to uh, this guy here and you turn power back on if the light leads you if the oh, pardon me if the light lights uh, then you know that that's your circuit going back to the panel the circuit going back to the panel has to go on the line side okay and uh, once you get power restored once you get uh, the line hooked up and the loads hooked up you turn on power and you reset uh, the GFI uh, that red button just resets it and uh, you can test it by tripping it and you should be good to go so the line has to be on the line and the load has to be on the load and that's really the only big issue uh, with GFIs the 15 and the 20 amp is a big issue I would not even bother the tw the 15s they're the 20s are harder to find but they're there uh, just look a little harder for them and uh, they hold up a little better that doesn't mean uh, they won't protect your circuit the 15 amp breaker that feeds your 15 amp circuit will protect the 15 amp circuit and in the kitchen the 20 amp circuit breaker will protect that 20 amp circuit not the GFI the GFI I have seen melt down uh, before it tripped because there was no uh, unbalanced load uh, just a lot of excess current so I've seen 15 amp GFIs in the kitchen just melt down because the, you put a toaster on there and the toaster was uh, 20 amps or 18 amps something like that and and uh, these things just gave up so make sure you get the right amount of current uh, for your application 15 probably in the in the bathrooms and 20s in the kitchen okay shook electric here uh, subscribe if you like uh, what you found and uh, I have about 17 videos uh, on various electrical issues and there's a lot of good information in those um, especially for the electrician uh, I've gone through uh, 50 some years of being an electrician and uh, 
some of that has rubbed off on me and I'm trying to pass that on. So um, subscribe. Thanks for watching.